the whole debt ceiling mess it, to me is kabuki theater because they always go ahead and end up proving it. So I don't see any weakness in any market right now as a result of debt ceiling talk staying. I think the stock market is going to continue to rise because like I said, I, I don't take it seriously. Nobody takes debt ceiling talk seriously because they always raise it. And there's no point in taking it seriously if U.S. Congress doesn't. We shouldn't either. Welcome to Gold Silver Pros. Hey, everybody. This is Rob Keens of GoldSilverPros.com coming to you with the weekly market wrap up for May 19th, 2023. This is your host, Rob Keens. The title of today's weekly market wrap up is Softening Economic Data Predicts a Stock Market Crash. I'm going to show you where I think that's the case. We're going to talk about a potential double top in the U.S. stock market. We're going to look at that softening data. We'll look at the gold and silver markets, and I've got some very interesting stories for you today. Let's go ahead and get started on it. Gold price is trading slightly up. It had been down and fallen below its $2,000 level. Silver had fallen below the critical support point at $2,450. They've been that way for about a week, but today they're rallying. Gold is up $17 at the time I'm reading this. This is about 10.30 a.m. Central Time in the U.S. Uh, gold's now up to $19.75.53. Silver's up to $23.90. Gold's up just under a percent. Silver's up about... 1.7 percent not too bad on the day yes gold and silver are trading down a little bit that's because fears of the bank failures have kind of faded a little bit now attention is being turned to the debt ceiling whether or not that's going to be raised uh, as i speak right now pal bernanke and other uh you know previous fed chairs are speaking well actually it's pal and bernanke and some other people are speaking to the press about what's going on in the economy that we're talking about employment uh, they're changing the way that they look at employment in terms of a predictor of the strength of the economy. I think probably because they got a lot of pushback last year when we had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP and they're saying, but employment looks so good and employment looks so good. Now in this press conference this morning, they're really analyzing employment in detail, among other things. And I found their comments interesting. I think that they're saying that maybe their employment measures needed to be readjusted. However, they're not talking about the problems with the data itself and garbage in, garbage out. So they may be refining how they look at the data, but if the data itself has issues, they may not themselves have an accurate picture. And many, many times I've criticized the data. So I don't know that this conversation is going to solve the issue, but at least the Fed's talking about it. And I thought that was a neat little update to give you guys. That's going on as I record this right now. Looking at the economic data, we have sort of mixed, but it's really soft. Manufacturing looks like it's finally capitulated. It's given up the ghost. The Empire State Manufacturing Survey for New York and area is negative 31.8. That's not good. And New York has been that way for quite a bit. Industrial production is up a half a percent, which is really not that much. Our capacity utilization, which is our ability to utilize our economy to produce goods, is still under 80 percent at 79.7. It's about the same as it was last month at 79.4. Uh, business inventories are down 0.1 percent. And going back to, and this is all data around how the economy is doing in terms of production. The Philadelphia Fed factory survey is down negative 10.4. So overall, our production is not doing great and we're not using all of our capacity. There's a lot of slack in the system. So even though people will talk about unemployment, there's still a lot of slack and that needs to be talked about as well. Even though we have people employed, we're not producing as much. And if we produce more and we did more things, we would have more people employed. And so that capacity really is a big issue. Going on to jobless, jobless claims are 242,000, lower than last month at 264,000, although still pretty high. Uh, overall, you know, looking at the employment situation, not bad, not great. I still think it's worse than what they say, the Fed is saying, what the data says. But, you know, overall, it's about even on the week. Um, looking at home sales and real estate data, we get these in piecemeal, but existing home sales are 4.28 million. That's less than last month at 4.43. I think interest rates are affecting that, as I said, and the consumer doesn't have any money. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, U.S. leading economic indicators, this broad measure that gets printed around how is the economy overall is down 0.6%. So again, very much a softening. I'm going to go ahead and do a share here and show you what's on the screen, a potential double top for the US stock market. This is a long-term view right off of CNBC about the stock market. And you can see here, we're starting to form a double top and that's where you have the neckline. You go straight across and you have a common point at which this started and you have one top and then another. This top is coming a little bit lower. So I'm not sure that I would call that double top just yet. We're sitting right here. But if with the stock market rising and a little bit of euphoria on the news and they think we've avoided this bank failure mess because that's what everybody's saying this could pop back up and if it gets anywhere near here and it's really close 
that could be a double top. Now, what is a double top? Well, if we look at Investopedia, a double top is uh, something that's extremely bearish. It says here, a double top is an extremely bearish technical reversal pattern that forms after an asset reaches a high price two consecutive times with a moderate decline between the two highs. Uh, oops, going back to the chart, reaches a high. If it gets close and reaches a high with a low in between with a common neckline, that is a double top. Is a double top forming in the US stock market? We don't know, but it certainly makes sense given the softening of the economic data. We could continue to rise a little bit on euphoria and then have uh, a breakdown eventually in the economy. I think that's what's forming. We don't know, but I'm going to read a couple of things on what a double top is along with an example. Here's the example given by Investopedia. Let's just blow this chart up. Here's the double top. You can see a top, a top with a little fall in between, here's your neckline right here. And then once the, uh, on the second top, once it falls below that neckline, which you go to the previous low before the first double top and it matches here, that's your neckline, boom, you're gonna go down and you're gonna have a little bit of weakening in that market. And that's certainly what we could be seeing. Now on to the economic data. How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? On the markets, I'm sorry, the markets are trading up today. Uh, the Dow is actually down about 100 points on uh, GOP negotiators halting debt ceiling talks, but overall it's up on the on the week, I should say. The market's doing okay, down 170 points right now. S&P down 16 points, NASDAQ down 57, but overall for the week, they're doing very well. The markets are very frothy. Now, the whole debt ceiling mess it, to me is kabuki theater because they always go ahead and end up proving it so i don't see any weakness in any market right now as a result of debt selling talk staying i think the stock market is going to continue to rise because like i said I, I don't take it seriously nobody takes debt selling talk seriously because they always raise it and there's no point in taking it seriously if u.s congress doesn't we shouldn't either looking at the cryptocurrency complex bitcoin is up 104 bucks today trading at twenty six thousand eight hundred. And 30 Ethereum is up $14.51 to $1808.92. Litecoin is also up about $49.9172. Overall, the cryptocurrency major uh, trading pairs are doing well, and the major trades are doing well in the cryptocurrency complex. What continues to concern me are the bonds. Bond rates for, for short term are going up steadily, and they're not stopping. They're all above five. So the six month, the four month, the three month, the two month, and the one month treasury, everything issued below a a year has spiking interest rates. The one month is trading at 5.529, the two month 5.252, all of them above 5%, the six month at 5.324. It's a nice high interest rate, which is indicating the market expects a recession. So despite what the Fed is saying, despite what the noise and, and, and the financial media is saying, people believe there's gonna be a recession, especially the launchers, and there's some of this, the smartest traders. The 10 years at 3.642. So the one month and the 10 year are almost two full percentage points behind. That is an extreme yield curve inversion on the very short end against the 10 year benchmark, which is the one that most of the big boys buy. That's why it's the benchmark. The two years are 4.213. That's about 0.6 above the 10 year. Again, in yield curve inversion signaling a recession. I keep talking about that over and over because it's so, so very important. Looking at the US dollar, we're going to go back to the share. I'm going to show you a little chart on the US dollar. Now, as far as the precious metals go, I don't think the U.S. dollar in the long term is exactly inversely correlated to the price of gold. I think at times they trade opposite. But if you look at a longer term chart, uh, they don't always trade opposite. So there's not a direct one for one correlation. But the U.S. dollar index is a good indicator of where the U.S. dollar is and how people see it. And uh, I had uh, previously a longer term chart. Let me see if I can get to that. Uh, let's go to a three year. So three years good because we saw, you know, a spike up and it got up to about there's a 112 print. There's a 113 print. So it peaked at about 113. We're still seeing over 100, but you can see the trend is down. Definitely, you know, after the pandemic, we printed a lot of money. Then it recovered. Everything recovered and now it's falling back down. And this this is sort of pandemic and recovery. This is sort of de-dollarization. And we have a little baby little recovery here, but the de-dollarization is going to continue to put downward price on the dollar, which means gold in the short term is going to continue to rise a little bit. That's why we've got a little bit of a bump in gold price today and, and recently, although this doesn't hold long term uh, stories that I wanted to talk about. First, I wanted to start with a story on Russia and Iran there. According to oilprice.com, Russia and Iran are pursuing a joint development of oil and gas fields. Once again, putting another nail in the coffin of the petrodollar. What is the petrodollar? The petrodollar is everybody trading for oil in what? 
dollars. Therefore, petro dollar. That's what solidified the dominance of the dollar in international trading and as the world reserve currency. Now, Russia and Iran are putting another nail in that coffin from oilpress.com. Iran and Russia are considering the joint development of as many as 10 oil and gas fields in Iran. Media have reported following in meeting between Iranian officials and Russian delegation led by Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak. The proposal has come from the Iranian side and been talked about the development of other oil and gas resources in the country. Novak told reporters that the sides have discussed specifically the development of six oil fields and two gas deposits. Gazprom, which is a big Russian producer, was considering taking part in the development of the Kish and North Pars gas fields and building an LNG production facility, Novak said. Second story, it has to do with consumers. I've been talking about how the consumer is not healthy. Here is an article from Zero Hedge. It says, battered by inflation, 90 million Americans struggle paying bills as credit card usage spikes. And I'm going to share the screen because I want you to see the story. It's a very interesting one. Um, as we can see here, uh, share of U.S. adults budgeting difficulties has gone up. Let's take a look at this chart. It's gone up. It's coming down a little bit, but expenses are elevated. And that's what we see in the chart. This is a Census Bureau Household Pulse survey. If we look further, we can see that consumers have had negative real wage growth. When you take wage rates minus inflation, so if prices are going up and you're getting paid more, but if prices are going up more than you're getting paid, your wages buy less. That's real wage weakness, even though the wages are going up compared with what you have to buy. After all, it only matters what you can buy with what you have. So what you're getting is going up less than what you're buying. You're in a negative condition. That's why all this red. Consumers don't have money because inflation is eating away their purchasing power, despite what's going on in the economy. So that's why jobs don't just matter by themselves. You have to look at wages, too, because even if people are getting jobs, if the wages aren't going up, they're still suffering. And that's essentially what's happening. The use of revolving credit has spiked. We've talked about this a lot on the show. Consumers are spending on the credit card. They're not healthy. This economy can't recover. Does that mean that we're going to be in a double top on the markets? I think we could be. We could be sitting in a double top on the markets. Going on to the gold market, we're looking at today's data. Well, actually, it's Thursday's data on trade. We'll get to today's data on the settlement. You can see a nice little bit of trading on gold, not too strong. You see rotation out of the June contract. Most of that is going into August. You see a little bit rotating in October and December. August and December should be the two biggest months ending the year after June for the gold market, where you can see heavy deliveries. Right now, we're in the May contract with a light deliveries of 45. You see heavy, though, on the June contract, the dominant contract right now, heavy movement over to exposure in London through the EFP or the exchange for physical uh, facility, which allows you to take a contract, a current data contract in the COMEX and go look at uh, getting access to gold in the London market. This is an indication that people want more gold than it's available. Why does that occur? Well, COMEX was originally not set up as a big delivery market. It's originally just set up as a paper speculative market. So not every month can you get a lot of deliveries. About six months out of the year, traders will place their bets. Why? Because it's a futures market. So they don't need every month. You know, they're placing a bet for two to three months to hedge their price risk or to gamble on the price. And they want a couple of months because it gives them some room, right? If you only do a month's contract in the future, the price is not going to move that much. You're not going to get a lot of run for your money. So the futures market was set up so that people could get run on their money to, to either hedge, but mostly speculate over a two to three month time frame because it allows you to make money off of it, not only the futures, but the options. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing. And that explains the difference between the physical and the paper market. People can get physical off of COMEX and certainly deliveries is a physical delivery. EFP could be a physical delivery over to London. And so that's when you see physical demand frothing like that. It means that the market itself, people are going to that exchange for the gold and silver. Why? Because they can't get it elsewhere. So deliveries on the exchange and COMEX have gone up over the last years, both in gold and silver. Looking at the settlement data, uh, June is still the dominant contract month. We settled down yesterday. Or I'm sorry, this is today as of about 1032. We settled 1959.80. Down about, uh, I'm sorry, this is Thursday's data. Usually when I do this Friday, I'll have Friday's data. This is yesterday's data. So settling down yesterday at 1959.80, I'm a little early to probably start producing it at noon today's data. So we don't have it on trading, but we know it's up a bit because you can look at the gold price and we're up 20 bucks on the day. So this actually be uh, next week. We'll see a little bit of positive print there on the data. We won't get that yet. We're going to look at silver futures. Overall, we're doing okay. Interest has kind of faded a little bit on the derivative exchange. That's why prices faded a little bit, because when interest fades, price tends to fade. Although I just wrote an article for JM Bullion. It's now on their blog, jmbullion.com forward slash blog. 
which talks a lot about how silver physical demand is very robust, even though the derivative markets are, are pricing it down. It's just the way it goes. Derivative traders are a fickle bunch and they don't really look at long-term supply and demand until it rears up and bites them in the, in the face. And so when we have a real physical shortage of silver, these people will start paying attention to it and you'll see a, a quick spike in price. Although right now they assume the market is normal because deliveries occur. In fact, we had 200 deliveries yesterday in the silver market. Not a big month. You can see only 187 contracts left open in May. The dominant month for silver is July, but it's rotating to September and December. And you can see those will be the last two big tradable months in the year for silver. Uh, 113,000 contracts uh, traded yesterday. Uh, 361 went to London in EFP. Uh, looks like 250 deliveries. Let's go back to Wednesday's data. Uh, only 25 EFP on Wednesday. Uh, no deliveries on 114,000 contracts. So deliveries in silver on the COMEX and over to London BAP are a little bit light this week. Going over to the settlement data, we have silver trading down. This is of yesterday. I don't have today's uh, data yet. 46,000 contracts trading on July. That's a dominant contract month for silver. And it traded down about 26 cents yesterday. Looking at the overall worldwide stocks of gold and silver, overall gold, there's been a little bit more come on. About a million ounces in the last four weeks come on. Although overall, if you look at what's going in, into uh, COMEX, only a slight uptick in gold, not much. We've still seen a lot reduced. And if you look at SBDR, which I use as a proxy for the London market, it's not 100% complete, but it's a big statistical sample. You see a little bit of uptick there. So a little bit of gold in the higher prices as gold approached 2000 coming back on the exchange, although not nearly what's been taken off the last year. So you've seen a little, little flow back. And I've explained that basically a bunch of times on these that's because higher prices a little bit will flow back, but much of it is not. Silver, we've had 5 million ounces come in. We've had a lot come into COMEX, about 354,000 in the last few weeks. So we've had a little bit come back in. We look at the chart there. COMEX, it's a little tiny blip. You see green here, but that's that little tiny blip. It's not much because that's how much was taken off. So as silver price rose a little bit, came back in, but not much. Most people are holding even in a rising price environment. That's how you know you're in a real bull market if we look at London and the, and the iShares SLV as the proxy for London. Again, overall, the stocks have been coming down, a little bit increase in price, a little bit flowing on recently, a few main ounces, but not enough to account for what had flowed off. So to summarize what we have this week, we have softening economic data. We have a concern about a double top in the US stock market, which seems to be forming, which is pretending a potential crash that seems to line up with the economic data as we have it. The government is coming to account with its interpretation of the data is not great and they're changing their interpretation although they're not addressing the weakness in the underlying data itself, which leads me to believe they're going to come to some false conclusions. And overall, the gold and silver physical market are very frothy. Now, I have a very special little added bonus for you today. Jay and Boyan has sent me some very special silver, and I got a bunch of it, but I'm going to highlight one particular round today, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is a two ounce Jay and Boyan round. I love this, guys. This is so gorgeous. This is their silver eagle. This is their what they call generic, but is their custom is really a better word for it. Custom round. You can get it at jamboyan.com. It's the only place you can get it. And it has jamboyan right on the back. There's their little mint mark, jamboyan. Very sharp, 999 fine, two full ounces. Look at that thick bad boy silver. And look at this gorgeous eagle. If you're a fan of eagles or the US, look at the relief on that. Look at the relief. Look how deep. They stamp that coin. How gorgeous is how the eagle, when you hit the light, just right shines. Boom. You got a little glint. We need a little music here. Look how gorgeous it is. Anyway, I absolutely love this round. I'm going to be showing you more silver from JM Boyan. If you're interested, we have a link below where you can use as an affiliate link to click through. And it just helps track sales. We don't make any money on those sales for JM Boyan, but it helps track what comes through the channel. And it lets us know how we're doing for them. They're a great dealer here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I love them. Been up there to visit them. We do a lot of work for them. I write their blog and we do these weekly market wrap ups, not only for our channel, but for theirs. Fully advocate you going over to Chamboy and checking out their inventory. Good, 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 solid company. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week on our weekly market wrap up. This is Rob Keynes from Gold Silver Pros. Until next time, we will be back next week. Stay tuned to this channel. Hey, thanks for watching. We selected these videos just for you. Check them out. And remember, $4.99 a month keeps the lights on and the channel going. So join our Gold Silver Pro Supporter Membership. We appreciate your support. Keep stacking.